Now, on another note, forget Iran and Omicron for a moment as another threat landing in the Holy Land. The H1N1, or bird flu virus, is back with a vengeance, and authorities are expecting to have to clear away upwards of 30 tons of crane carcasses from the north, where some 6,000 wild cranes, roughly a fifth of the local population, infected and dying. In the meantime, hundreds of thousands of chickens likewise set to be culled as the virus spreads across the region. So how did this happen so quickly and quietly under Israel's nose? And what do we do next? Here with the answers, environmental reporter with the Times of Israel, Sue Sirks. Sue, it's great to have you with us. Thank you so much. Now, you know, you reported, you. You reported on these issues uh, th this week. How, how did Israel miss this until it was too late? Well, it depends who you ask, but the agriculture ministry suspects that the, the farm where the uh, bird flu broke out, which was in Margaliot on the Lebanese border, didn't report the poultry deaths in time and therefore they spread. Um, the um, Israel Nature and Parks Authority thinks that the cranes probably caught it from a vehicle or the driver of the vehicle who, de who delivered food to the farms and then came to the Agmonahula uh, to deliver food for the cranes. So, you know, what, what's the expected environmental fallout or the consequences of this? You know, what does a loss of 6,000 wild cranes in a migratory region do to the ecosystem? Listen, it's something that's absolutely unprecedented uh, in Israel, these kind, of, these kind of numbers, this outbreak of bird flu amongst wild birds. And they've also found since uh, outbreaks in the, um, in the Hefel Valley, in the Jezreel Valley, and in the Bet Sha'an Valley, not necessarily cranes. There's also reports of uh, ducks and um, pelicans having gotten it. Mm. Uh, one of the reasons why it's worst in the Hula Valley is because the... Uh, nature authorities have actually been feeding the birds there, and that's to pacify the farmers because before they were eating, you know, taking their pickings from uh, from from the croplands around. Um, they are actually still feeding the birds because they don't want them to fly elsewhere now and take the disease with them. So. Um, what can I tell you? It's very, very, very sad. The cranes are also, you know, they're very, they, they, they form partnerships which are very, very faithful. And um, there's been reports of, you know, one, cup, one, one member of the couple not willing to, to leave another one and getting infected and dying. So it's just profoundly, it's profoundly sad. Wow. All right. Now, uh, aside from the devastation to the environment and uh, to, you know, to, uh, to the ecological aspects of all of this, you know, is there an economic fallout to this? Uh, you know, as, as you reported, there's a black market for egg sellers trying to, trying to offload the, the eggs that were set to be destroyed. Uh, I'm assuming chicken meat and other things as well. You know, how, how are farmers feeling, especially in the North, how are farmers feeling this, uh, this outbreak? They're obviously feeling it very, very badly. They say there's going to be a shortage of 14 million eggs. We do eat an awful lot of eggs in Israel. We eat something like, I think, 200 million a month or something like that. But I think that the story also conceals something um, which, which also has to be dealt with quite apart from, you know, how the farmers feel today or, or how many eggs we're not going to have, although the agriculture ministry is going to be importing eggs so that the consumers don't feel it. The conditions on most of these farms are absolutely filthy and appalling. Something like 93% of coops do not, you can see a little chicken there in its cage, uh, do not meet either animal health, fare, either animal welfare or um, sanitary standards. They say that a third of the coops have salmonella. So the one important thing is that if you are eating chicken or eating eggs, you have to cook them very well. Um, there's been talk for a long time. In, 2000, in 2007, the government made a decision to reform um, the coops to bring in more modern coops. Uh, of course, nothing was done. Odid Foro, the current agriculture minister, wants to make good on that. He wants to end cages, uh, which are now, can now account for only about half of coops in uh, the European wow. Union, but account for most of the coops here. Um, you know, but it all needs budgets and, uh, and it all needs time. And, uh, and in the meantime, of course, these chickens are crammed into these cages under terrible stress. And that provides the perfect conditions for the spread of what are called zoonotic viruses, you know, yeah. and COVID is also a zoonotic virus. If we think we can continue to cram animals into cages like this or into other very 
compressed mm. conditions uh, and expect not to be affected by that. And in fact, already 20 kids were were treated for. Um, wow. Uh, they were they were petting. I think they were petting a crane, uh, and they developed symptoms of this of this bird flu. So they've been treated for it. But uh, you know, this really touches on on many broader issues of how we relate to wildlife and how we relate to, to livestock. All right. Well, I hope that we're learning some of these lessons and uh, and that we reverse some of this trend uh, before it's too late. Sue, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. ILTV Plus, your news from Israel and more 24-7. Start your free trial today. Subscribe at ILTV.TV and watch from any device.